Suresh Chandrabos. Suresh has been working as a manager in Cognizant for the last uh, 16 years. So he has got uh, various industries experience. Uh, he has executed, executed strat strategic initiatives for um, many PPM processes. And uh, today he's going to talk about uh, transforming organizations to achieve TMMI certification. Uh, let me introduce uh, Suresh. Thanks, Jay. Okay, so it's not 16 years with Cognizant, it's six years with Cognizant. Um, and overall, like 18 years of IT experience, working with multiple clients, Fortune 50, uh, probably I would say Fortune 50 clients. And uh, I don't know, like, to what extent everyone is aware about TMMI? Anyone is aware about TMMI? What TMMI is all about? Have you heard it before? Yeah. And... I guess you're familiar, right, TMMI? All right, I assume. OK. Uh, so I'm uh, one of the first, and I would say, like, uh, the only one so far in more, uh, both North and South America. I'm the lead assessor for TMMI. Uh, so I'm just going to take a sample of how we took one of the tech technology giant, uh, Dell. I think you're all familiar with Dell. So we, uh, we did. Right from scratch, we did the informal assessment and we took them to TMMI level three. And they are the first in entire North America to be certified at any levels of TMMI. Okay. So I'm just going to walk through the TMMI journey, what we did in Dell. Okay. So we're going to quickly go through what TMMI is all about and how TMMI compares to CMMI. Okay. So how is the structure of TMMI related to CMMI? And uh, we're going to take a sample roadmap when anyone wants to go for a TMI implementation, how the journey is going to look like. We are not directly going towards the implementation, but there are some steps before implementation. So we're just going to have a look at it. And what is the assessment approach? What is the rating TMI mandates? Okay. So the framework is purely from the TMI foundation. We're just going to have a look at it and how the roadmap looks like and what are the typical benefits. I'm just quick, going to quickly cover this for the lack of time, and uh, I'll take any questions uh, maybe at the end, or in case if you have any questions, feel free to stop me. Okay. So TMI, as you all know, it's Test Maturity Model Integration. It's uh, started, developed by the TMI Foundation, and uh, it contains the same guidelines, uh, how an organization has to improve the test maturity, test, testing practices. It's almost similar to CMMI. How many of you are familiar about CMMI? Almost everyone. Okay. So they exactly copied the structure from CMMI. Okay. If you see like TMMI and CMMI has the same levels of maturity, uh, we're going to see them in the next few slides. So TMMI has five levels of maturity. Okay. Starting from level two onwards. Level one, any organization, whether you have a process, whether you don't have a process, whether you follow a process, whether you don't follow a process, you're already at level one. Even any ad hoc organization, we can say that they're they are already at level one. So the actual rating starts from level two onwards, and it's going to be a staged representation. Staged in the sense, say for example, if you want to go for level three, so in that case, you need to fulfill level two as well as level three. So if it's going to be level four, if you want to go for level four, it's going to be two, three, and four. So it's called the stage representation. Okay. And uh, you, you can probably ask a question, I mean, is it suitable only for waterfall or is it for agile? TMMI doesn't worry, I mean, doesn't care whether what kind of methodology you follow. Irrespective of any methodology that you follow, TMMI is going to be applicable. Okay. Okay. Why organizations typically go for TMMI? What is the need for it? Okay, you can stop me, I mean, in case if you have any questions. One of the key, uh, uh, the need of late, I mean, we have been getting, uh, I would say, like, last two years, this tremendous amount of RFPs that I've been working on, on team organizations want to go for TMMI. But what is the need? If you see, I mean, the most of the, the, uh, the, the IT uh, spend on testing is, can you guess how much it is? Five. Five? Hi, okay. Any any guesses like what is the IT spend on testing? Or probably the testing effort. 
overall uh, compared to the overall project. It's almost. It could vary. Yeah, it's the industry standard says 35 percent of the effort has been spent on testing, but there was no industry standard reference model before TMI came into existence. So that's one of the reason. If you see CMMI, their focus is on complete SDLC, software development lifecycle, but little focus was given to testing. So that's why TMI Foundation, they gathered all the best practices related to testing, and they came up with a framework called TMMI. Okay. So the key benefit is every organization now, a lot of testing organizations, they are planning to go for TMI level certifications. The main reason is they want to show to the business the value add following the testing practices. Okay? And they want to do some kind of benchmarking. This is the only benchmarking. I would say like testing, it's a highly structured and repeatable industry standard test reference model. This is the only model available in the market for any testing certification. So they want to show the value add to the business in terms of your testing practices. And if there are organizations where they come back to us saying that we want to improve our test efficiency, test effectiveness, help us to drive that. So we take TMI as one of the industry reference model in order to achieve their journey. As I told you, TMMI came from CMMI. CMMI focuses on end-to-end -end software development lifecycle requirements, starting from your requirements to the design, to the code, to testing, to the service management. Okay? So there's little, uh, if you see, the, there are a lot of pr process areas within CMMI also on testing, but it's very limited. They have validation, verification. There's not much focus on testing, except for a handful of processes, process areas. But whereas TMMI is fu fully 100% focused on the testing practices. Okay, I'm just going. I'm, I'm just showing an illustration of what CMMI is all about and how is it different from TMMI. CMMI has been developed by Carnegie Mellon University uh, in collaboration with the ACI. TMMI, it started by the TMI Foundation, as I told you earlier. And again, we already saw that it focuses on the entire SDLC practices, but here it's focused only on the testing practices. There are two kind of representations in CMMI, staged and continuous. I mean, it's a huge subject. I don't want to get into that. TMMI is only, uh, it focuses only on the stage representation. As I told you, like if it's going to be level three, two plus three, it's going to be level three. Okay. CMMI has other frameworks, CMMI development, CMMI acquisition, CMMI for services. I have worked on all these uh, models of CMMI. You don't have those kind of uh, segregations within TMMI. As I told you, there are five levels within TMMI. It starts from level zero. Again, any organization is already at level zero. The actual rating is going to start from level two onwards. Level two has five process areas, and again, level three also. But what is the difference between level two and level three? So if, uh, if you're moving from level one to level two, you can say that your processes are kind of stable at the project level. That's what is level two, which is called managed. And level three, the process are becoming stable at the organization level. Okay? In level two, I mean, you, you are doing something at the project level, but when you do the same kind of uh, repeatable practices of testing at the organization level, then, you go, then we call it level three, which is, which is called defined phase. Level four is more focused on the quantitative uh, measurements, more focused on the analytical part, lot of data comes into play in level four. It's again a higher level of maturity. And level five is where we call it optimized. Lot of continuous improvement. There's a focus on improving it continuously. So that's where level five comes into play. Typically, 80% uh, of the organization, they go for level three. When you say any organization is at level three, then I think it's pretty much, I mean, they are in a very good shape. Okay. You can see the same. Uh, in a pictorial view. And you can see these are the five levels. And what you see here, they are called process areas. Level two has five. Level three, again, has five. Level four has three process areas. And five has two process areas. So Dell, they went for level three, as I told you. That's called define. So the scope for the assessment was two plus three, since they went for three. So five plus five. So 10 process areas were part of the scope. 
and each and every process area again i mean the structure is if you want to say that they are at level 3 they have to fulfill all the practices within these process areas and within these process areas we'll see in the next few slides how they are structured i mean they have goals they have practices they have specific practice generic practice and sub practices okay the moment you fill, fulfill the sub practices it gets rolled up to the maturity level and you can say that for them to be at any uh, say that this process area i mean test planning is fully achieved they need to fulfill all the practices specific practices and gen generic practices within those process area okay and i might it might be too confusing for someone who is not aware about tmmi but this is high level you can think of the process area you need to fulfill the process area for them to be at level uh, any levels any question so far this is uh, i mean the these focus areas it's ma it's mandated by tmi foundation it's not cognizant methodology it is tmi uh, foundation methodology and again when you go for cmmi they have exactly the same naming for the five levels cmmi also has optimized measure define manage initiate so they tmi copied the structure from the cmmi okay so dell uh, or name any organization when they when they come to us and say we want to go for tmi level any levels what we typically do is the first and foremost thing that we do is we do a informal assessment okay to see where they exactly stand what is their current state look like okay so that's what uh, we do an engagement planning to see like who all the stakeholders can be interviewed we we kind of do an interview and also document reviews as well that's part of the assessment and again i mean and we just gave them a week a week b week c it depends on the scope of the assessment how many business units you want to cover how many projects are going to be in scope so everything matters okay so assume i mean there are three business units so we typically it could range from 4 weeks to 6 weeks for doing this informal assessment okay as part of this we talk to various stakeholders we do some kind of a survey also to all like when when it's a stakeholders it is for the testing organization but again testing has upstream and downstream interfacing with other stakeholders too the testing team inter inter interacts with the development team they also interact with the service management team the production support team they also interact with the business analyst team also so we do also talk to those people to understand the challenges related to the testing practices and as part of the interviews we ask a lot of questions related to how the practices have been currently followed in the organization with respect to testing and we do a document review and then we come up with the current state report so in the current state report we kind of tell them i mean this is where you are with respect to the level that they want to go for these are the gaps we do a gap analysis here here you are and this is what team mandates the practices so this is the gap okay so in order to address those gaps what we do is we come up with a recommendation road map that's again on the next uh, next phase of it so the recommendation road map it, uh, we bring all the best practices what team mandates okay and how you can implement not just blindly giving them a road map we'll just come up with implementation plan how you can address all those recommendations any questions and i'm little fast because i need to this it's a huge topic and i've conducted half a day workshops on tmi so that's why uh, i'm just giving you a gist of it <laughs> okay just stop me if in case if you have any questions okay so let's discuss about the rating part so team may have something called a guidelines on how organization has to be rated on how the practices has to be rated okay so the guidelines they are called tamar team may assessment method application requirements as we saw there are five levels if you see there are 16 process areas like five from level 2 five from level 3 and again we saw that three four two from level 5 
So overall, we have 16 process areas in all the levels, 77 goals, 345 practices. This, this is again for level 5. Okay? If you want to achieve level 5, then you need to fulfill all the 345 practices so that you can be rated as PML level 5. Okay, I, it's testing practices, but still, the lot of aspects you have interfacing with other areas. For example, like unit testing. correct, and I can also give you other examples. Say, for example, you have the test planning. You also have, um, yeah, test planning. You have the non-functional testing. So, for non-functional testing, I know like Jay is like uh, he's more into security testing. Uh, so security is one aspect of non-functional testing. People have to write the non-functional test cases. That's one aspect. But even before that, one of the practice mandates that do you have a non-functional requirements in place? For that, I mean, the testing team is not, uh, they're not the one who writes the non-functional requirements. The business analysts have to write that. So this is, this still kind of ties, expects some kind of uh, requirement from the other teams also. So it's not purely focused, I mean, even though it's a testing practice, but still it requires some kind of a discipline from others as well. Okay? And also there is something called traceability. The non-functional requirements have to be traced to the non-functional test cases. Mostly the development team gets involved in terms of the traceability. They, they, they need to make sure the requirements are getting mapped in collaboration with the testing team. So this is the this is how the rating really happens. If you see, I, we talked about a lot of practices, 345 practices. You just let's take an example of one pra particular practice. And when you do an assessment, you take a sample projects for the organization. Okay. So here we are taking project one and project two. We are going to see we are going to rate this particular practice. Okay. And when you do an in, from like we gather the interview notes and we see okay. Does exist, and it's fully fully achieved. For example, and what we do is at the organization level, we we again say it's fully achieved. So what happens if project one is fully achieved and project two is not fully achieved, largely achieved? Then it goes with the least parameter. That's the example in second one. Project one is largely achieved. Project two is fully achieved. So at the org level, we call it as largely achieved. We don't call it fully achieved. And again, at a goal level, again, we take the least parameter. So again, it's going to be largely achieved. So the goal, we talked about practices, we talked about goal. So the goal is not fully achieved, it's only largely achieved. Any questions? I mean, this is how the segregation looks like, the process area to the goals to the practices. Only if the practices are fully achieved, you can say that the goals are fully achieved. And again, only if the goals are fully achieved, you can say the process area is fully achieved. And again, in turn, the process area, for example, in level two, you have five process area. When all the process areas are fully achieved, you can say, okay, this organization is fully achieved at TML level two, and we can say that they're certified at level two. Right? Any questions on this whole uh, concept of evaluating the maturity levels? All right. Like we saw in the previous slide, fully achieved, largely achieved. How do you, when do you say that it's fully achieved or largely achieved? So these guidelines, as we saw earlier, it comes from TMI Foundation based on the guideline called TAMAR. So if it is fully achieved based on the interviews and the document, we do the document review whether you have a test policy in place whether you have uh, test estimation, whether uh, traceability is being followed or not. We blindly not go, we, we won't go with what they talk in the interview, interview process. We also go and evaluate and see whether the project really has all those artifacts available. Okay? Then we come to a conclusion. It's not, probably would say like, okay, it's roughly, the compliance level is 85 or uh, Probably, I mean, we make a calculation, okay, it's 90% they have the compliance. Not 100%, but still 95 So team kind of gives the leverage 
85 to 100 percent if it is compliant, then we call it fully achieved. Okay. And largely is anything between 50 to 85, it has been characterized as largely achieved. And 15 to 50 is partially, and if anything like less than 15, I mean 0 to 15, it is not achieved. And there are other ratings like not rated. Say, for example, some could be not applicable. Uh, we have the test planning process, right? Um, or, or, or we can even talk about uh, what if the project is in the very initial stage? Project just started and it is in scope for the assessment. There are a lot of things about the test execution aspects may not be not, may not be applicable at this moment. So we call it not rated. Okay, it may not be applicable at that point of time project phase, it is still in the initial phase, there are a lot of practices related to the test execution, those may not be applicable, so we just rate it accordingly. Yeah, this is an example of the, how the roll up happens, uh, take an example of level 2 which is called managed and they have like 5 goals or 5 process areas. We are just taking one example of the first goal, 2.1 alone, test policy and strategy. Okay. These, this process area again has three goals. Okay. And we are just again taking one example of this particular first goal. It again has a list of three practices. We call it sub-practices. And again, within internally they have sub-practices here. If they want to fulfill the test policy test goals, Organizations, they do define um, test policy. For example, in Dell, initially they didn't have, but we, we did define as part of the implementation. So test policies, one test goals, uh, do you ha does the organization has any test goals in place to move forward? If they have it, then we'll say, okay, this practice, specific practice is fulfilled. Okay? If all these practices, three practices are fulfilled, we just tell them, okay, this goal is fully achieved. If this goal is fully achieved, and again there are two more goals, so if all these three goals are fully achieved, then we say this process area is fully achieved. Okay? And again, it again depends on the other process areas also. If all these five process areas are fully achieved, then we call it you are at level two. This is how the structure looks like. It's a kind of bottom-up approach, starting from the specific practice, sub practices to specific practice to goals to maturity level. So when we did the assessment uh, for Dell, as I told you, I mean, there were quite a few gaps, but again, in order to address those gaps, we came up with this kind of, uh, it is again a sample roadmap. Uh, typically for any organizations, we kind of use similar uh, structure for them to address all these gaps. Okay. So what we do is like, we come up with these phases. For them to address, in some cases, they may not have a process in place. Okay. So we kind of define those process. For example, it could be on risk, it could be on estimation, could be on test design techniques like the equivalence partitioning, boundary wall analysis. Or they may have a process in place, but it is not sufficient to meet the practices of DMMI. So in that case, what we do is we take the processes, we try to revamp them, we try to update the existing processes. So still it's been part of, we still call it a definition phase, either writing a new process, defining a new process for them or updating their existing process. Okay. Once we define the process, what we do is we take some sample projects, a pilot, we call it pilot okay. and then see how it, uh, for example, the test uh, uh, or test estimation. Okay, we, ca we, came, uh, we came with some kind of a uh, technique, how they can estimate the process, how they can estimate the testing effort. Okay. And for us to roll it out, we just took one sample project which is at the planning phase, so that we can do the estimation. So when we did the estimation, in some cases what happens is, the pilot may not work out well. So in that case, we again redefine the process. Okay, that's why pilot is very important. We just blindly, we cannot define and then roll it out to the entire organization. So piloting plays a very critical part to see, based on the outcomes of the pilot, we will know, okay, whatever we have defined makes sense. If it makes sense, then 
we roll it out to the entire organization. That's called institutionalization. Okay. Make sure it gets, sorry. Uh, you mean these numbers, right? right? Okay, so it's called D1, D2, up to D11. So these are the 11 processes that we defined for Dell. Right. Okay, and D1 is nothing but definition one. Right. So these are the processes definition phase. Okay, again we, we can still call it out P1 for pilot, but again we are the main focus was on definition for that particular organization, and they wanted it to call it out specifically because this was one of the milestone that they were tracking. Uh, the boxes here. So you've got uh, persist environment management, you have three blue boxes for the Yeah. Okay. So, right. So there was a time frame. I mean, I, I don't want to give the complete roadmap how many weeks or months. So there was a time frame. Like these are all, it's a time, yes. Correct, exactly. Yeah. And even before we pilot, I mean, there's one important element here called training. People have to be trained, otherwise, like, how will you pilot it out? We just took an example of estimation. Unless we train them, they may not know how to estimate it, right? So, training is an important element when it comes to the rollout. And then, they reach a steady state, and when they reach a steady state, we kind of do again a reassurance kind of assessment again to see are they really ready to go for a formal certification? Are there still any more gaps? If there are no gaps, then we say that okay, you are ready for formal certification. If not, again, I mean, they, they have to take it very seriously that certain things are not working out well. So, Maybe they might have to push back the dates for the formal certification. Okay. Well, uh, you might be asking, what is the benefit that my organization is going to get out of this? So here you see. You see all the levels of TMMI from level 2 to level 5. You can see all the process areas. And the benefits in terms of cost, quality and the time, speed to market. Some are like, you can see, I mean, partial benefits, some are like largely, and some, you can see like there are maximum benefits in each and every area, okay? So it does impact all these elements. For example, um, let's take an example, test monitoring and control. Okay, you can see like cost, you have cost as well as quality, but speed to market, um, it's partial. And again, I want to bring, bring to your attention about the ROI, the savings that you get from when you move from one level to next level. This is again based on the sampled projects uh, from, uh, from Europe. They did some kind of a benchmarking exercise. Okay. So when they moved from level one, I mean, there's nothing, so it's all zero. When they moved to level two, you can see the ROI of 26%. And as you go further, I mean, uh, level three, they were able to see 55%, four and five, I mean, again, like almost close to 64. And again, within these different levels, we were able to calculate the ROI over the previous levels. So it does have a bigger impact in terms of your savings. So that's one of the reasons I think a lot of organizations off late have been going for various levels of TMOMI. Okay, it doesn't represent any, uh, like how large your company is or how small. No, how many, I mean, how many, probably It's not quantified, it's very subjective. Oh. Yeah, that's why, I mean, we gave, uh, say for example, when you have planning, it's definitely going to impact your speed to market. When you have a, when you fulfill all the practices related to test planning, definitely you are going to, maybe initially it might take more time, but again, over the period of time, I think your speed to market is going to improve. Planning. Yeah, 
No, 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 no. So that is, I think, this one. The savings is different from this, this one. For the savings, they really took into consideration what is the effect, what was the cost that they spent, and how much cost for different levels have been spent, how much time it took from every level. So, but not for the first one. Any questions? Okay, so in US, Dell is the only company, uh, they are at level three. But globally, I mean, if you see, I mean, there are a lot of companies back in Asia, they are already at level five. And the team, level five, yes. Uh, mostly, predominantly, it's all software industry, but again, it doesn't pertain to any particular vertical. Say, for example, if you take, uh, like Dell is a technology client, okay, there are a lot of communication clients who are at different levels, level 3, level 4, level 5. Uh, it could be like any industry. It could be healthcare, it could be life science, it could be banking, it could be insurance. So if you go, I mean, I request that you go to tmmi.org. You have a lot of, you, you can see the list of all the companies that are certified at various levels. And um, uh, like you can also find Dell also there. So the final certification is provided based on your uh, quality audit, or is there any way to measure something like how Six Sigma works? Um, it's purely based on the assessment that we do. And again, we saw the rating, how it works, fully achieved, largely achieved, partially achieved, not achieved. So we roll that up from the sub-practice level to the practice goal, and then we'll say, okay, all the process areas are fully achieved for level two, you are level two. And again, for level three, we do that. It's purely based on the assessment that we do. We take a sample projects, and again, for sample projects, we want to cover the entire organization. Say, for example, they might have a life cycle, they might have waterfall projects, iterative, agile, so we would take all the samples, and they might have Small projects, medium, large projects. We, we again, that will also like, we'll take all the projects into consideration. And some projects were distributed, like they were based out of US, some were based out of Bangalore, some were based out of Taiwan. So we in turn again took all those, we made sure that all the geographical representations were also adhered to. And uh, again, the other aspect is business unit. They had four different business units, and we made sure every business unit has a project been covered in the sampling. Okay. So overall, I mean, there are quite a few projects, um, more than 10 projects, uh, at least for Dell, I would say, uh, we took it for the formal assessment. So visit, I would request you to visit tmmi.org for uh, more information. And tmmi, I mean, if you see like last three years, or probably like before five years, Hardly anyone knew what TMMA is all about. But now, I mean, there's a tremendous amount of uh, a focus on various test organization because they want to improve the maturity practices. They want to in adopt the industry standards. Because TMMA tells you what to do, but it doesn't tell you how to do. Okay? When you see TMMA has all these practices that has to be fulfilled. For example, test estimation. You need to have an estimation technique to measure your testing effort, but it doesn't tell you how. You can follow story point, you can follow any other industry techniques for estimation. They, won't, they just tell you what to do, but not how to do. It's a collection of the best practices. That's what TMMI is all about. And I have six minutes left. So it's all the reference. Uh, again, the reference model is, uh, you have a PDF, it's, we call it Bible for TMMI, it's a huge PDF. Um, again, the link about Dell being certified as the first in, uh, let's say, North America, so you have that link as well. And one of the other reference I've spoken in ASTQB, ASTQB conference last year, it was again related to TMMI. Uh, it's a certification body uh, within US, American 
I don't know if you know ISTQB. Okay, so they are the ones in US who conducts certifications, testing certifications. Uh, there are various certifications, ISTQB foundation level, advanced level for managers, expert level. So they conduct all the certifications, testing certifications. Well, you can find me easily on Facebook, or oh, sorry, Twitter or LinkedIn. Again, my name is little big. I mean, you can see Bose, both in my first and last name. First name is Suresh Chandra Bose, last name is Ganesh Bose. So, I know people get kind of get confused. So if you search for Suresh Chandra Bose, you can easily find me. I'm the, uh, or my link is here. Uh, yeah, I thought there were two names. <laughs> it's one name. Four minutes. Any questions? No, the framework, it's called the Bible for TMMI. It um, has all the practices, all the process areas. It's very, very detailed. Free? It's free, yes. You have the link here, it's free. So I request, I mean, just go to the link. Feel free to adopt some of the practices, what TMMI mandates. It could be any of the process area. Like I think in his uh, focus, I think security, I mean, he can take the non-functional testing into account. And there are other areas like we saw test planning, peer review, estimation, advanced peer review, test measurement. If you want to continuously improve this, again, you can go for level five practices. You can adopt that. Three minutes left. Any last question? Uh, if you go to the website, it tells you like, okay, level two, how many organizations are certified level two? Level three, what are the organizations? Level four, level five. You can see the name of the companies at what level. But I mean, it doesn't tell you like how much they were benefited and things like that. But it just tells you the name of the organization and at what level they are certified. There are a couple of case studies uh, in the team organization, the team.org website, so you can have a look at it. Uh, so bottom line, I mean, by adopting all these practices, you can see a sea change in your quality transformation, scaling up your testing maturity over a period of time. And I'm again, I'm from Cognizant, and Cognizant, if you go to the team.org, org, Cognizant is one of the certified uh, accredited service provider for TMMI. And I'm, a, I'm the only one available in the whole North and South America as a lead assessor, certifying organization. So in case if your organization wants to adopt to any levels of maturity, I mean, feel free to reach out to me, and I'll be more than happy to help you out. Thank you.